Welcome back to the DIY Maker. Today we're going to build a pack of batteries out of two 21700 cells. These are high-end cells and I hope to uh, really extend the life of battery on my uh, mesh testic radio. First thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how wide the shrink tubing needs to be uh, to contain the pack when we're all done. But I wanted to have all this material already prepped so here we're going to use a mat cutter to get a nice straight cut on this material. You could certainly do it with a pair of scissors. It really wouldn't matter. Once we have that ready, we're going to get the uh, low voltage cutoff board. This is not a true BMS. It's just going to prevent this battery from getting over discharged, which is something that can really damage a lithium ion cell. I also printed uh, two end covers on my 3D printer to protect these uh, electrical connections once they're done. Uh, the heat shrink's really not enough protection. Now we're going to unwrap the safety wrap on the batteries, get them ready to go. And we're going to cut two strips of the nickel bus strip and uh, get these in the vise ready to spot weld them in place. And I cut them a little bit long at first. I wanted to get them placed to see what I really needed. And then I trimmed them. And the spot weld is actually super, super easy. You can hold it with one probe, like hold it in place with a little bit of friction. And then you just tap the other lead down. And wherever those two leads are contacting the uh, strip and the battery, it's going to give you a really nice uh, fusion spot weld right in that spot. So let's get this going. We'll get one joint there done. Another one. So this is the ground side of the battery. And I'm going to put a total of six spot welds on this end. Just because I had the area. There really is no structural reason to do this. This pack's never going to really draw more than... Uh, a couple hundred milliamps of battery power so it's not you know we're not racing slot cars or anything here or RC cars anyway uh, gonna do the positive end now get some good spot welds here I'm gonna go with four on this end just because of the space limitations there's already plastic rings on these ends of the battery so I don't need to add them otherwise you'd want some uh, protection against the bus bar potentially touching the case of the battery. So now I'm going to get my wire ready. I've got some really nice silicone stranded leads here. They are 22 gauge. And what we're going to do is tie the bus bars um, into the battery low voltage cutoff board. So first I'm going to tin the wire and tin the uh, bus bar area. And then once they're tinned and ready to go, the actual soldering just takes a second to heat those two up, get some flow, and then let it cool. And presto, we're done. Flip it over and get ready to do the ground side or the negative side of the battery. This is frequently referred to as B- minus and B- positive in, uh, in battery parlance. So we're going to tin up the ground wire, get that tacked in place, and uh, we could, you know, we could put this into service right now on a lot of uh, mesh-tastic products, but I really wanted to get that low voltage cutoff in there. So right now I'm going to warm up my lithium-ion heat gun and put some glue on the insulating caps that I made and just stick them on the ends. These are there just to provide a little mechanical insulation and abrasion resistance on the ends of the pack. Um nothing more and the hot melt glue uh, on the plastic first keeps it from sinking too much heat away so we get a good bond on the metal side of the battery because that hot melt glue stays pretty warm and now we've got uh, got the ends of our pack done we're going to stick this little board in place and put a little bead of uh, hot melt glue down the middle here and just touch that board down in place there. We've got four connections. The ones on the very ends are B- and B-positive. 
and I orientated the board so that it would line up with the wires that I just put in. But one thing you want to remember on these JST connectors that I'm going to use on this battery pack, um, most of the time they come to me in the reverse polarity. So I have to switch them back, and that's what I just did. I just pulled those terminals out and swapped their location so that they work with the uh, mesh-tastic radios correctly. Seems like every wire I get is the opposite of what a mesh-tastic radio, mesh mesh radio needs. But anyway, I'm going to uh, tin these pads on the, per on the circuit board and uh, get them ready to go. And then we're going to cut these leads that go from the bus bars to the board to the right length. Get a really quick strip on them. And then we're going to tin those leads and then tack them to the PCB. Now again, the bus terminal on each end is going to go to uh, B plus and B minus. Make sure your polarity is right because this is where bad things can happen. So work slowly. Be sure before you start soldering things together because there is current available here right now. Not anything to worry about, but you just want to be sure you're doing this right. And that's going to do it for tacking the um, bus terminals on. And now we're going to do what is P minus and P positive, which is pack minus pack positive. And I'm going to get those tacked on. And for wiring, that's pretty much it. Now, I did go ahead and just put a little bit of uh, hot milk glue over the top of this for no other reason than to, other than to just shield them a little bit uh, mechanically. It doesn't stick up above the uh, cylindrical wall of the cell, so you're not going to see it in the heat shrink, but just to give it a little more protection electrically. I'm sure somebody who makes packs for a living is going to tell me I'm doing something wrong, but this is what I thought would make a good, reliable pack. Now, here is really my first mistake. Um, I, I've never heat shrinked this type of material before, and you can get too close with your heat gun, and uh, and it'll actually punch a hole right through that, and I do that right here, and it really ticked me off because I was really just trying to get it nice and smooth, and man, just a second too long or a second too close with the heat gun, and I had to go with a second layer over there. I wasn't going to cut the other one off. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have, but... We're just going to put another piece to cover that hole up so that uh, nobody but you knows that I made that mistake. Unless somebody takes this pack apart in the future. But I'm staying much further away this time with the heat gun so that I don't, uh, I don't put too much heat in one location on this film. Other than that, it does a great job. It actually makes a, a nice looking pack when we're done. And I was pretty pleased with the whole process. This is the first real pack I've ever made, and um, I liked it. So now we're going to take and put this on our Mesh-tastic radio. This is a rack-based um, radio. It is uh, actually it did really well with the 18650s that were in it when I first built it. But I really wanted to get these uh, 21700s in there because that was the case that I printed was supposed to be sized for 21700s, but um, it's actually a little bit tight, and uh, I'm going to uh, probably take this back apart in the future and dremel out some material on those sidewalls just to give it a little more space. It did push the sides of the case out a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. I just want to get some uh, longevity testing done on it to see how it holds the charge and what it does, but that's it, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me here on the DIY Maker and uh, this battery pack build for my Mesh-tastic radio. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.